Good afternoon. Thank you very much for staying with KTN News. My name is Betty Okari. Thank you that you could join us on this edition of KTN News Desk this third day of December 2015. We have the latest from the country, the continent and the globe. Let's begin with the highlights. Senate wants former Kenya Airways CEO Titus Naikuni answerable for the airline losses. 14 people killed in another U.S. mass shooting. And South Africa's Supreme Court finds Oscar Pistorius guilty of murder. Thank you for joining us at 1 p.m. East African time. Now, a parliamentary report has questioned the capability of Kenya Airways Chief Executive Officer Mbubi Ngunze and the company's vote to run the national carrier. Uh, the report arising from a Senate investigation has attributed the financial crisis facing the national carrier to the board members incompetence. Well, it has also questioned Ngunze's capability to steer the airline to greater heights arguing his uh, recruitment to the position was flawed as he did not meet the qualifications as out outlawed, uh, outlined rather in the Kenya Airways Operations Manual report. Uh, the report also wants a former CEO and board directors investigated over the airline's losses. Moranga Governor Mwangi Wairia and Kandara Member of Parliament Alice Wahome were among mourners who paid a visit to families of the 10 victims who perished in a greasy road accident in Gatundu on Sunday. Now, the victims died when their PSV vehicle was swept by floods. The mass service was held in Kandara with the governor pledging to donate a million shillings uh, from the county Kiti in support of the affected families. No problem, no problem. A village in tears, a county in mourning. The sights and sounds of a quiet village in Kandara, Muranga County, trying to come to terms with an accident in neighboring Gatundu that robbed it of nine members. Muranga Governor Mwangi Wairia was among the mourners. Here to condo with the families of our friends, brothers and sisters who lost their lives uh, due to a tragic road accident along Kiambu when they were coming for... for, 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 for a marriage ceremony from Nyahururu uh, within the week. The Sunday morning accident claimed a total of 10 people, the search and rescue effort extending to this river. <laughs> With remnants of the victims' belongings reminding the search party that theirs was a tough task. Kigumo MP Jamlek Kamau was represented by his wife Agnes Irongo at the mass and family visits. He's out of the country. She offered a family donation of 200,000 shillings with well-wishers also chipping in to support the bereaved. In a strange twist of fate, only one village in Kandara was hit by the hand of death that took away nine of its members. One family lost three members while yet another lost a parent barely a month after the other parent died, rendering the children total orphans. We are going to support them with one million, uh, which means that Everybody believes you get 100,000. If one family has lost three people, we are going to give them 300,000 so that uh, that can go towards uh, the burial preparation. Governor Wairia and Kandara MP Alice Mudoni also hinted that both levels of government will prioritize families that lost breadwinners in education bursary allocations. Mm -hmm. The accident shook the nation as it came hot on the heels of yet another flood-related calamity in Migori where a minibus was swept away by flood waters, killing five people last week. Mark Namaswa, KTN News.
for a developing story, and Oscar Pistorius has been convicted of murder by South Africa's Supreme Court, now which threw his conviction on the lesser crime of culpable homicide for killing girlfriend Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius will have to return to prison after the court found him guilty of murdering Steen, uh, Steenkamp in 2013. The 29-year-old athlete was convicted of manslaughter or culpable homicide for shooting Steenkamp through a toilet door in his home early on Valentine's Day 2013. The verdict that was read by Judge Leach, who was part of a panel of five judges that made that decision. The murder conviction carries a maximum, maximum rather, sentence of 15 years in South Africa. Except in that matter. Now, the armed couple who were suspected of killing 14 people in a mass shooting in California were later slain in a shootout with police uh, having been identified by authorities only as a seared uh, Rizwan Farouk, who's 28 years old, and Tashfeen Malik, who's 27 years old. Uh, police have described the two as possibly married or engaged. The two are believed to be the only shooters involved in the rampage, which ranks as the deadliest burst of U.S. gun violence since the December 2012 massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown. A man identifying himself as the brother-in-law of one of the suspects in a deadly shooting said he had no idea what might have motivated the attack. And I, I just cannot express that how sad I am for, you know, what happened today. I mean, I, I condolence this to, you know, the people who lost their life. I am very sad that, you know, people lost their life and there's victims out there. Um, I, I wish a speed recovery to them. And again, I, I'm, I am in shock that something like this could happen. So we initially put out that we had information that there were upwards of three shooters. Right now, as we continue to drill down on information and the witness statements that we have, it really looks like we have two shooters, and we're pretty comfortable that the two shooters that, that we believe went into the building are the two shooters that are deceased up on San Bernardino Avenue. Right, and we will now want to just take a look at the timelines of uh, active shooter events that uh, the U.S. has suffered in the last couple of years. And we start with the one that I just mentioned, the uh, 26 children who were killed, and of course one staffer who was killed in the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, uh, Connecticut. Now that particular person shoot, uh, shot uh, 20 first graders and seven adults that was one of the unfortunate events that of course uh, lingers so clear in our minds when we think about the shootouts that have been happening in the united states let's move on to another event and this time is towards on uh, september 16th uh, 2013. now in this case 12 people were killed and three others were seriously injured now this one took place in washington dc moving on to another uh, shootout uh, event that was on the may on the 23rd of may 2014 now here six people uh, were killed and seven others were wounded this was in isla vista caliph now something about this one it was a 22 year old who meticulously planned uh, his deadly attack uh, for more than a year now what this person did he spent thousands of dollars in order to arm and train himself on just how to go about that particular shooting now this was of course uh, called uh, one of the worst uh, shootout events that happened in the United States this time round in California again. Now, let's look at uh, June 18th, 2015, and this one left nine people dead. It took place in Charleston. Now, something about this one, authorities are suspected uh, white uh, supremacists uh, started firing on a group of African Americans who were gathered at Emmanuel African Methodist es Episcopal Church after first praying with them. Now, this also was a very unfortunate 
uh, event in the United States. Moving on to another one. And this time it was uh, on July 16th, 2015. Now this particular attack left five people dead, three wounded, and it happened in Chattanooga in uh, Tennessee. Quite a number of unfortunate incidences uh, that of course have been happening in the United States. Another one that also rings very clear now, this one was actually very recent on October uh, 1st, 2015, which is the next one. And uh, that one uh, left nine people dead and nine others seriously injured. That took place in Rosebag, Oregano. Now, moving on to another one. Now, this is just the one that I've just mentioned. Nine people uh, were, were killed and nine others were seriously injured. Moving on to another one. Also, quite recently, about uh, just a, a week ago, um, actually, uh, this was November 29th, uh, 2015. Now, this one left three, de uh, three people dead and nine others injured. It happened in Colorado Springs. Now, in this particular event, a gunman entered a Planned Parenthood clinic in uh, that particular uh, hospital and started firing aimlessly. Now, the recent one, of course, that happened yesterday was this one that left, actually it's not four, but 14 uh, people uh, dead and 17 others wounded. It happened in uh, San Bernardino. Now, this uh, had two uh, suspects who are said to be a couple or engaged who are heavily armed and possibly wearing body armor and they opened fire at a holiday party. Some of the events, this is just some of the few events that the U.S. of course has suffered in regard to this active shooter event. Well, we want to take a short commercial break. We will be back. Stay with us. Noon. And the Central Organization of Trade Unions has opposed the introduction and implementation of the Excise Duty Bill 2015. Now, the bill which proposes an increase in excise duty and therefore an increase in the price of basic commodities has attracted stern reactions from Kotu, which is now accusing the government for failing to protect the rights of Kenyan workers. The organization has urged the government to stop the proposed increased excise tax and instead focus on retrieving money lost through corruption. is going to have an effect on the price of fuel and you are aware that once the price of fuel goes it has a far-reaching effect on the issue of cost of transportation to the place of work cost of transportation when the people go uh, from places to place from town to town in the process of doing their normal duties as Kenyans so you cannot keep taxing the Kenyan worker who is already heavily taxed today Kenya is among the, heavy, the heaviest taxing country, I think, in the Africa, if not in the whole world. Koto is going to take the lead, and we are pleading with the other people with like minds, like us, the political, the parliamentarians, and everybody to stand and stop the government of Kenya from frustrating Kenyans through unnecessary taxation. This week, we shall call a Koto board. We shall call a Koto board to take a bigger stand where we shall call all our general secretaries to take a stand on this so that if the government don't listen to us, then we must be able to mobilize Kenyans so that we see the position that we need to take. Because Kenyans cannot keep suffering every year while the other people take the money that we collect. Now, the Water Ministry and the County Government of Mombasa have clinched a 25 billion shilling deal with World Bank to fund a water project that could end Mombasa's county water problems. The agreement was signed on the sidelines of a session on water resources and climate change by Governor Ali Hassan Joho and the Water and Irrigation Minister Eugene Wamalwa. Our special correspondent, Alex Chamwada, has the details from Paris. This conference is not just a talk show. There is a lot of deal making and the Ministry of Water and Irrigation together with the county government of Mombasa are taking home a 25 billion shilling deal that will see improvement in water provision in Mombasa County, a county that has been facing serious water challenges. The county featured prominently in a discussion about building water resilience in urban areas. This is part of the proceeds of the World Bank loan for the Climate Resilience Project, which we will be using to construct Mwache Dam water project for both Mombasa and Kwale counties. As an old city, Mombasa lacks a comprehensive sewerage network 
that match its current population and the challenge of solid waste disposal and management has gripped our beautiful city causing blockages and flooding during the rainy seasons. Governor Joho said the people of Mombasa can expect to benefit from that service in the next five years. What this has done for us is to be able to open doors with other uh, international donors. Already we are talking to the Dutch, the Netherlands government on how they can support us on the distribution network. The World Bank had made it very clear that uh, after signing the initial agreement with our national treasury that there must be a water purchase agreement with the county government of Mombasa to ensure that the huge quantities of water that will be uh, supplied from Wacha Dam would have a market and this will be uh, uh, what Governor Joho has signed today. The two leaders said this was a demonstration of how the national government and county governments can collaborate to improve livelihoods and cushion Kenyans against the negative impact of climate change. For KTN News, I'm Alex Chamada at the Climate Conference in Paris. Great news for Mombasa residents. Now, let's move on to a developing story back home and one person has been confirmed dead following the collapse of a silo in industrial area of Nairobi yesterday evening. Now search for other four missing persons is still underway. Well, we are now joined by our reporter Nick uh, Wambua who is on the ground to give us an update. Nick, thank you very much for joining us. Maybe you can just bring us up to speed with what's happening there um, and especially with the four people who are still missing. Nicholas, can you hear me? Right, we seem to be having a problem there connecting to Nicholas Wambua, but he will be getting um, back to us shortly. Now, to another story here that is still developing. We had highlighted it earlier, and Olympic athlete Oscar Pistorius has been found guilty of murder after a South African appeals uh, court overturned an earlier manslaughter verdict. He killed his girlfriend, Sariva Stinkamp, in February 2013 after shooting her four times through a toilet door that was locked. He is currently under house arrest after spending one of his uh, original five-year sentence in jail. Pistorius will now have to return to court to be re-sentenced for murder. South Africa's Supreme Court of Appeal uh, ruled that the lower court did not correctly apply the rule of dollars eventualis, whether Pistorius knew that a death would be likely to result from his actions. Pistorius' lawyer argued that he believed that there was an intruder in the house. Right, we want to go back to that developing story right here at home and uh, of course it's in regard to the collapsed building in industrial area here in Nairobi, Kenya and uh, we understand that one person has been confirmed dead uh, following uh, that collapse of the silo in industrial area. We also understand that four people are still missing. Let's see if we can now talk to Nick Owambua. If you can hear me, bring us up to speed with what's happening there currently. whereby a silo came down yesterday. This is a witch company whereby um, it is reported that more than five people were trapped uh, in this witch. And as you can see behind me, um, rescue operations are still ongoing and the reports reaching us is that um, they have already um, um, gotten two bodies. Uh, that is, they already passed on. Uh, that is since yesterday night. The incident occurred yesterday since 4 p.m. And um, rescue operations, that is... Um, the Red, Kenya Red Cross and the National Disaster Management Unit, they're still uh, continuing with the operation, um, uh, the, continue the rescue operations, as you can see, and there's a lot of weight, uh, which uh, it is reported that these uh, people were covered in this weight. Uh, back to you, Betty. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Nick Wambua, reporting from the ground. 
of course telling us that uh, there are two bodies that have been found in that uh, collapsed silo. We'll be getting details of that in our bulletins throughout the day. Now, moving on to sports. And uh, law enforcement officials made more arrests in the ongoing investigation of Soka's world governing body FIFA in a pre-dawn raid on a hotel in Zurich. Now police soaked on the luxury bar and uh, two people were seen being taken to a garage and then to an unmarked cars which drove away. Now Swiss police confirmed a police action uh, was taken uh, but would not provide any further details. Swiss police are said to have entered Plush, uh, the Plush Hotel through a side door at 6 a.m. with officers targeting current and former senior soccer officials. Divock Origi scored a hat trick, his uh, first goals for the club on a night when every time a Liverpool player touched the ball inside the penalty area, it seemed to end up uh, Daniel Sturridge making his first start since the Merseyside derby on October 4th, scored twice and substitute uh, Jordan Ibe endeared himself to the travelling fans with the belter to give Liverpool a sixth win over Southampton. Take a look. and Liverpool as the two locked horns in their Capital One Cup quarterfinal match. The Saints had made the quarters for the second successive season while the Reds were eager to get to the semi-final stage for the third time in five campaigns. It was a blockbuster start to the match at St. Mary's. Lovely cross, super header and a goal after 41 seconds for Sadio Mane. That explosive start had the fans rocking and it was almost 2-0 but Victor Wanyama couldn't get the better of Adam Bogdan with his header. Starting his first match under Jurgen Klopp, Daniel Sturridge then got on the ball and fashioned a shot that flew past Martin Stecklenburg to equalize. Having leveled the score, Liverpool then turned on the style and Emre Chan pulled a pass out of the top draw. Oh, super ball and a lovely, lovely goal. Polished off by Sturridge. It was the visiting fans' turn to sing, and their noise levels hit the roof when Alberto Moreno fired in a rocket from range that Divock Origi got a touch to to make it 3-1. The Belgian was involved again in the second stanza as Origi blasted in his team's fourth of the game. The Reds were all over the Saints, and some indecisive defending saw Jordan Ibe control and lash in the fifth goal for Liverpool. The visitors weren't done yet, and Origi sealed his hat-trick with a thumping header. Doing so, he became the first Liverpool player to ever score a hat-trick at Southampton. The one-sided match ended 6-1 to Liverpool, who made the semis of the League Cup for a record 16th time. Now, coastal side Bandari finished amongst the top four bracket this season, surpassing expectations of many football fans. The Dockers have now set their sights on Gorma here, whom they say have unfinished business with uh, the Go TV finals. However, Gorma here have to navigate through Nakumat FC in the semi finals first. Bandari is eyeing continental football next season. Bandari FC have had a wonderful campaign this season. Apart from finishing fourth in the Kenyan Premier League, the Dockers secured a place in the Go TV Shield final after thrashing Moroni youth by four goals to one a fortnight ago and are now awaiting the winner of the second semi final between Nakumat FC and league champions Gormahia. And according to their head coach, Toir Muidin, meeting the latter will be better. <laughs> Uh, tumepata tikiti ya bure na tupambana nao ni kwamba pia tunawajua hiyo ni faida nyingine ambayo tunaitegemea meeting gorma here will give bandari the chance to participate in next year's cup confederations cup no matter the outcome for a team that survived relegation by a whisker in 2014 finishing two places above the relegation zone the players had to punch above their weight this season and that they did tofauti ni kwamba tumeleta vijana wengi Na si vijana tu ni vijana mba wana uzwefu wa ligiku. Wamesacheza miaka mili mitatu. Japokuwa ni vijana. Kwa hivyo, nizakusema uzwefu wa ulitusaidia. 
na nguvu za vijana zinajulikana hawachoki sana the squad returned to training camp early this week at the Baraki Stadium after one week rest preparing for what is going to be their biggest match of the season ayo match itakuwa ngumu pia itakuwa race pia kwao na sipia kule itakuwa race kwa hivyo match itakuwa ngumu lakini sisi tuna hope better results Kogalo are seeking to add to their trophy cabinet but they will first have to navigate through what seems to be an easy fixture on paper but somewhat tricky against Nakuma FC. The last time Bandari played Gurmahe in the final was in the 1986 Moy Golden Cup final in Nairobi where Gurmahe won by a single goal to nil. Abula Ahmed, KT Sports at the Mbaraki Stadium, Mombasa. Right, and that's where we wrap up things here on KTN News Desk. Uh, but of course, part two is coming up next as we talk about the World Disability Day that is usually marked on the third day of December 2015 or every year, actually. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Betty Okari. Remember that part two of KTN News Desk is coming up shortly. And uh, stay with us. See you later.